Greetings and welcome to From the Basement. This is the introduction video to Game 105 at Johnson County Community College. If you are not enrolled in this course, you're not going to really find all that much of use here. If you are enrolled in the course, welcome! My name is Richard Fleming and I shall be your torment I mean, um, instructor <clears throat> for this course. The focus of this course is learning the basics behind game development. The book that we will be using is The Game Maker's Apprentice. Now, this isn't the greatest book in the world due to the fact that it is horrifically out of date. Uh, the version of Game Maker that The Game Maker's Apprentice uses is Game Maker 6. Since then, we've had Game Maker 7, Game Maker 8, and are now currently on Game Maker Studio. So, yeah, a lot has changed. None of the projects in the book are going to work, well, almost none of the projects in the book are going to work straight out of the book. There are going to have to be changes. Don't worry, as I go along through the course, I will point out what these changes need to be. Just wanted to give you a heads up that this is going to be an issue. Uh, the format of the course is going to be fairly project heavy. There's going to be a lot of work here. Game development is a lot of fun. It's also really, really hard and a lot of work. So you've got to be prepared to work hard during this summer. You are taking this class the hardest possible way, online during the summer. What is normally a 16 week class is getting crunched down to eight weeks and you don't have that mental pressure of knowing that you need to be in a specific room at a specific time or the instructor's going to notice. That mental pressure is not there. This is going to rely very heavily on your self-discipline to work on the course every day. I'm not kidding about that. Every day, Monday through Friday, possibly weekends as well, you need to be working on something from this class or you will get behind. And you don't want to get behind on a summer course. So please, make sure that your schedule is light enough that you can dedicate time to this class every day. And make sure that you do have the self-discipline necessary to do this class on your own. Check in every day on your own. Get things turned in without having an instructor standing in front of you saying, Okay, now remember, tomorrow this assignment is due. Got to be able to do this on your own. All right, with those dire warnings out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about some general resources for the college and then do a brief overview of some of the resources you will need for the course itself. There's a lot of those actually, so I have an entire separate video dedicated to resources for the course. But first, general resources. We've got our main page here. Uh, there's not much really on this one. The, the login link here, of course, I'm sure most of you know this one, but this gives you very easy access to my JCC Desire to Learn and Paper Cut. Uh, the main thing I want to show on this is how to find the calendar for the semester. If we go to Academics and Programs, Academic Calendars, and Summer 2014, we will have a list of all of the important dates for this semester. For the regular spring and fall semesters, this is also where you will find your final schedule. Of course, being a summer session, finals is the last day of class. Uh, there are some important dates on here that you do need to keep track of. Uh, for example, the June 9th is the last day to drop this course and receive a refund. Uh, now, there is a little bit of confusion on this. Apparently, June 13th and July 15th are the last days to withdraw from an eight-week course with a withdrawal on the record. I'm contacting the school to try to get a clarification on this because I don't know about you guys, but that's certainly confusing as heck to me. So hopefully later on in the semester, I'll be able to put a news item up on the course announcing a clarification to this odd double date thing here. Normally, they don't do that. So... But this has all of our important things. It has, you know, what is the last day, any holidays, which isn't really all that relevant to us since we're online, but still good to know. July 4th, yay, fireworks. So good place to check out, especially during the regular semesters for that final schedule, which would be down here. Moving on from there, I want to talk about our library a little bit. We've got a couple of really good resources at the library. Resources at the library. 
Uh, one of those being the complete set of Game Developers Conference 2009 sessions. Uh, during that particular Game Developers Conference, they produced a set of DVDs that had recordings of all of the sessions from that year's conference. The Game Developers Conference is like the conference for game development. If you are serious about getting into the game industry, you need to make it to that conference. It is incredible. Uh, those resources, those, those DVDs are a great way of sort of seeing what's going on, you know, what happens at, you know, the high end of this industry. What are you getting yourself into? So I highly encourage you to go in and uh, check those out. They are a reference material, which means you cannot leave the library with them. They're for in-library use only. The other really useful thing on the library's page is if we go to Browse Databases, Subjects, or Alphabetical works too, but I usually like going through Subjects, Technology, and then scroll down. There it is, Safari Tech Books Online. Now you need to sign in with your MyJCC username and password if you are off campus. On campus you just go straight in. And this is a collection of professional books on a wide range of times, topics. You've got science, you've got math, you've got business, you've got IT, you've got game development. They have got a lot of, a fair number of books on game development here. So this is an excellent resource. You've got a lot of books here that you can read for free. Highly encourage you to take advantage of this. Uh, moving on to my JCCC, of course you're all familiar with this page. Uh, the main thing I want to point out on this one is the Activate Student email. I don't conduct school business through non-JCC email accounts. That's sort of a controls method for me. This helps ensure that anytime I give out information on your grades or your status in the course, I know I am giving it only to you because I am sending it to your student mail account, which only you should have access to. So all official school communication is like as, as far as, you know, how am I doing in the course or I've got a question about this project type of questions needs to come through your student mail account. So please make sure you activate it. Also, if I notice a problem with an assignment, this is how we will contact you. Say you turn something in, but when I go to open the attachment, the file is corrupted and I can't grade it. I will contact you through your student email in addition to through the uh, desire to learn system. So please make sure you activate that. Uh, the other good thing about activating this is your student mail is basically a Gmail account. It includes all of the Gmail add-ons like Google Drive. It is not uncommon for the Game Maker Final Project to be too large to submit to the uh, online learning system. I don't know about Sire to Learn yet, uh, what their limits are. It's the first semester I've used it. But in the old system, it was a very frequent problem. With your Google Drive account, you can upload your Game Maker project to Google Drive and then just simply share the link to me. So, yet another reason why activating your student email is a good thing. Paper cut, most likely not all that relevant to this class. There's not going to be a whole lot of printing out, but this is how uh, pages are managed when you do go to print things out in the lab. Uh, you get, I believe it's 100 pages free per semester. I think it's slightly reduced for uh, summer, I'm not sure on that. But it's enough pages that if you manage it and you're careful about it, you should be able to get through the semester without burning through all of your pages. Um, if you want to buy additional pages, this is the uh, system you go through as well. And no, I did not buy $1,000 worth of pages. That's just how they credit instructor accounts. It's still really weird seeing that there, though. Finally, again, not so much for this class, but it's definitely useful for the programming classes. Uh, Johnson County Community College has an agreement with Microsoft through the DreamSpark Premium Program that allows students to get free downloads, legally, of quite a few of Microsoft products. This does not include Office, sadly, uh, but as you can see here, Microsoft Visual Studio, both 2012 and 2013, SQL Server, um, operating systems, uh, you can get Windows 8, 8.1, 7, and Vista all for free and in 64 and 32-bit versions as applicable. So it's a great resource. Uh, you should get an email from them for activation. It's going to look a little, a little bit spammy. I've had several students tell me that they either deleted it or almost deleted it 
because it looked like a spam email. Careful, don't delete it. Um, if you don't get it or you think you did delete it, you can send a, a email to the help desk, helpdesk at jccc.edu, and uh, tell them that you need help activating your DreamSpark account, and they should be able to help you out with getting that activation email. Okay, and that covers just sort of generic resources. Real quick, here's all the resources for the course. Okay, I'm lying. That's not all for the course. Uh, this is just my uh, generic game development resources list, although a lot of these are related to the course. Uh, like I said, I've got a separate video that deals with all of these, but Yo-Yo Games uh, for Game Maker, Unity 3D for the Unity Game Engine, GIMP because you will be required to create your own graphics for one of the assignments. You don't have to use GIMP, by the way. If you're familiar with Photoshop or something else, feel free. GIMP's what I know, and that's what I'll be teaching for that section. Uh, Beatbox.co, which is uh, excellent for creating chip tunes. BFXR, sound effects. Abundant music, procedural music. GameArt.org, useful for both sprites and sounds. Uh, glitch, sprites, and in Computech, graph paper and sounds. So, like I said, I've got a separate video dealing with those resources directly. And actually, that pretty much wraps up this introduction video. So, uh, if you are going to be continuing on with the uh, course, we will definitely be meeting in person at some point. And if not, well, regardless, I hope you guys have fun during the course. So, let's get at it.